Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing a review for the premiere of Supergirl. So let's start talking about this episode. And here we get to see a much darker Supergirl. After the loss of Monel, she just does not want to be Cara Danvers anymore. She doesn't really want to be human. So she very much focuses on being Supergirl and, and pushes everyone away, even though pretty much everyone has a scene with her saying, hey, shake out of it, uh, especially Alex, James, and I, and also uh, Marsha Manhunter. Wynn's the only one who doesn't really get a scene like that. But uh, by the end of the episode, uh, Kara is able to, I guess, start her healing, and uh, she opens up a little bit more. And we also see Alex dealing with her, her wedding, and that she doesn't want a big wedding because of her father not being there. And there's such a great scene where we get to see uh, Alex and Marsha Manhunter uh, interacting with each other and Alex asking John, uh, will you be my father for the wedding? Walk me down the aisle. And, and that was such a beautiful moment. There are a lot of powerful scenes in this episode. That being one of the most powerful. And also Alex and Kara, where Alex says, I don't need Supergirl. Supergirl has, you know, Supergirl saved me, but Cara Danvers has saved me more. And uh, I really love those two scenes the most here. Um, another interesting uh, thing we got going on here is the introduction of our main villain, where we get to see our main villain's actually this normal mother. And we see her going to the Supergirl festival, uh, Supergirl day, where they're unveiling the statue. And then that's when she realizes about her powers is when her daughter is in harm. And she's like, oh, God, what's this? And, and she wakes up from a bad dream seeing uh, Erica Durant's character, Kara's mother, but in this kind of zombie-looking form. So she's unlocked whatever her mind has been kind of covering because she's been on earth and and she doesn't seem to know anything about her heritage or the powers and i feel like that's a really interesting direction to go with a villain because usually the villains of of the year they know their villains they know their motives but it's cool to see a villain from start to i guess finish this season uh so i really like the development of her and how she seems normal, and I'm really excited for her journey. And then we also have Alina, who buys Kako, because Adrian Pazdar's character uh, in the episode is, you know, mustache twirling villain. He tries putting missiles <laughs> uh, towards uh, National City, and he is about to buy over Kako, but Lena wins. And this honestly does help her, it helps uh, Kara to become... Cara Danvers again, when Lena just wants her to, to make an article, even though Cara quit. So I, I do like that moment where she sends a text saying, hey, see it, work, boss, and, and I'm excited to see Lena more in, in the show. Uh, so really solid episode. I, I know some people are going to be a bit mixed on the doom and gloom Supergirl, but I think it makes a lot of sense for what we saw last season. She lost her, I guess, her first love, and she needed to deal with that. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a whole season. It looks like it really was just this episode, and, and she's going to have to deal with her emotions, and she, she's still going to be darker. It looks like she's still going to go a darker route, but she's not going to completely uh, close off people in, in the rest of the season. If she you know, gradually connecting again with people. And I did like the scenes of how much they care, not just for Supergirl, but obviously for Kara. So those are some good moments. And I'm still curious uh, how the Maggie and uh, Alex scenes are going to, or, or their relationship's going to really work, because we know that the actress who plays Maggie is not going to be a series regular. does not mean that she's not going to be on the show, but we know she's not going to be in as many episodes. So I wonder where this is going to go. Is the wedding going to connect to the crossover with, uh, I guess, Iris and Barry's wedding? Uh, I don't know, and I'm, I'm curious about that, uh, because the way this episode is told, it seems like, you know, Maggie will be there in every episode. So I'm really curious about how that's going to work out. So like I said, I thought it was a very solid episode. There's some really good setup for the rest of the season. Adrian Fastar's character could have been a little bit more interesting than the twirl your mustache, hey, I'm evil and have money type villain. But everyone else had a, a really good role here. Maybe a little bit more for Wynn would have been nice too. He was just, you know, kind of there and didn't really have as much conversation with Carter as uh, maybe he should have. But uh, like I said, every other character was really interesting and the main villain uh, is really interesting. 
So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Of course, I have a review for Supergirl next week. I'm glad the show has returned, and I'll see you guys later. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also, description below, there are links for my comic book, like Father Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page up, like Father Like Daughter. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.